Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the new Gems of War Mythic of Vosh Dagon. It is that time of the month again, so we're going to be opening a bunch of keys and showing some teams for the uh, new Mythic. Of course, new Mythic comes into Gems of War every single uh, first Friday of every single month. He's in the Glory Gem Guild and VIP chest for uh, this week only, and then he'll be in the drop table with uh, everything else, as well as in the uh, Soul Forge on the uh, normal rotation. But anyways, as far as this troop, it is very similar to that of uh, Black Beast. Black Beast is a uh, ultra rare troop that ends up devouring one of your allies and then heals back to full and ends up creating uh, six skulls. So this does it for a uh, 12 mana cost and it can end up getting quite a bit of HP and stats in general since it gets to steal all the stats except for magic, while also creating some skulls. All of his traits are pretty lackluster though. And that's basically what this mythic is, except not exactly the same. If we go to unowned, would be the easiest way to find it right now, since we're, of course, going to be opening up the keys for it in a moment. But as far as what this troop does, it is the same color as uh, Doomclaw. So uh, at least a Doomclaw alternative now, since he's the second mythic that uses this uh, coloration. He ends up devouring an ally, similar to that of uh, the Black Beast. But then he summons a daemon if the ally is devoured. Basically, what that means is it'll only summon a daemon if it ends up getting a devour kill. So you end, if you end up using his ability on something that has a mean to devour, it will not end up summoning a daemon. It will only summon a daemon if you specifically devour one of your allies, and then it will replace that with a uh, with a daemon. Uh, one thing that it makes this pretty decent is that you don't need a, another troop in order to have a summon. In the case of Black Beast, you always need to have a troop that is capable of summoning to some degree in order to constantly have things to devour. Whereas with Rosh Dagon, he's always going to have a way to uh, always be able to devour something. The only exception would be if the daemon that you happen to summon has immune to devour, which can end up happening. But more often than not, a good majority of the daemons will not have immune to devour and you'll just simply be able to keep uh, devouring them over and over again. Other than that, he also ends up doing a small amount of true damage which is boosted by his life. This is actually the same boost ratio that Def has now, and they actually work pretty good together using uh, Vash Dagon and Def, mainly because he ends up cursing a uh, enemy when matching uh, brown gems. So you can spam this with like Mountain Crusher and other similar things in order to curse down the entire enemy team, get a Def down on it, and boom, you just four times Def mark them. And since they're cursed, you're pretty much just going to have a curse on them and a Def mark until they essentially just die to the uh, Def mark. And it would end up working out pretty well. Other than that, he has a much better trait than that of Black Beast in that he has Impervious. Uh, so he will not be able to uh, be hit by most uh, status effects, or all status effects, as well as most effects in the game. And other than that, he also has 25% spell reduction, which will help reduce down some of the damage. The main thing he is missing, though, is he does not have a full heal. Uh, he does not fully heal whenever you do his ability. And that's probably the biggest difference between him and Black Beast. That and the fact that he's double the mana cost, but it's mainly because it's a mythic and all the other things that it ends up doing with it. Uh, overall, a rather average mythic, not really one that I feel like is going to be too over the top. Might be used occasionally for some fun teams, might end up finding its way into Guild Wars in some situations. But aside from that, I don't really foresee it being used for delves or high level content and other similar things. Uh, main problem that it's going to have is it's just too high of a mana cost compared to that of uh, Black Beast. To be viable in many of these situations and there's just going to be better uh, options up there out there for upscaling uh, however despite saying that this mythic is relatively good to go for for one specific reason if you happen to own zugoth haha <laughs> but uh, if you happen to own zugoth which is the hardest troop in the entire game to obtain um you can actually 10 star Kerkaroth right now Unfortunately, it is required to own a Zugoth to 10 star at the moment. However, even if you don't currently have a Zugoth, you might still want to highly consider this mythic because whenever another Kerkaroth event comes around, that will bump it up so you can actually get it to uh, 10 star. And the main reason why this uh, kingdom is so relevant to get to 10 star is, of course, all 10 stars end up giving an extra stat. However, Kerkaroth, of course, is a magic kingdom, though this is the second magic kingdom to end up having a plus three bonus, which we'll be getting in a moment once we get that thing upgraded. But um, yeah, and you will require owning this mythic, and it'll be the alternative to not needing to own a Zugoth. Right now, you'll need it for uh, 10 star, but the second they add another one, um, all you'll need is this mythic and whatever the event they do. And then boom, you'll have 10 star. But regardless, you will require, in some shape or form, this mythic in order to get Karakaroth to 10 star, regardless of how you look at it. So, um, highly advised to get it for pretty much at that point uh, alone, if you're close to getting it to uh, that far. 
simply because plus one magic permanently all for everything is very, very strong, to say the least. It's one of the best stats in the game, or it is the best stat uh, in the game, whenever you can get a plus one off it on a kingdom. So uh, highly advised to get it, even if that's the only reason you get it, and you don't plan on using the troop whatsoever. That being said, let's go and uh, try to get it. I feel like I'm a little bit low on gem keys. However, this is the, um, since the most recent patch, where we don't have the old system. So I guess we could theoretically be getting slightly less gem keys, but slightly more gems. That could potentially be happening. Because this does seem like a slightly smaller stack than uh, what we had before. Though we did go all the way down to zero last time, so that could have also been a factor with it. But we still, still have all of our guild seals, so... That will be able to cover a, uh... A uh, good amount of it there. But let's go and get all of our gem keys until we can actually find this thing. And then start working into the uh, seals. I don't know, I might go for some glory keys here. Let's see. I'll go into glory keys a little bit. How many glory keys are we currently sitting at? I guess we'll go down to about 10,000 glory keys. And if we don't get it by then, which is how we ended up getting it last time was off of some glory keys. We'll end up just using some guild uh, keys. Uh, guild keys at level 6 chests when you have it at 40,000... Uh, um, total uh, seals for your guild will end up giving the highest drop rate in the entire game other than VIP keys. Uh, VIP keys, if you happen to have gotten any from any of the new adventure board stuff, they do have a 1% chance each to end up dropping a uh, mythic. Of course, you can see uh, any of the drop rates simply by clicking on this, and you can see this is a 0.01. Gem keys are a 0 0.1, uh, which is 10 times higher. Uh, and the guild keys, when fully maxed out, are actually 0 0.11. So basically combine the two together and of course one percent on the uh, vip keys but we'll go do this down to ten thousand. hopefully we'll be able to get it here and uh, then go and show the teams that we already have pre-made three teams i want to show two using the mythic one using uh, black beast just to show the black beast comparison for anyone who doesn't end up getting the uh, mythic as well as just in general because there are situations where the black beast team even though this mythic exists would still be better uh, there are some occasional situations, mostly PvP actually, oddly enough, where it would uh, potentially be better using Black Beast rather than this uh, Mythic. Biggest issue that he's going to have, hey, Tesla's going to be pretty good synergy with it, but biggest issue he's going to have is just how high his mana cost is. A lot of Mythics tend to have that problem, where even if they have a really good ability, just having a 24 mana cost like that is such a gigantic liability with things like Mana Drain. But it looks like we won't be able to get it on glory keys, so let's go try our seals. Luck. We have plenty of seals, that is for sure. And hopefully we'll be able to get it off of this. So far, so bad. Let's see, we are on max chest, right? We should be. Uh, yes, we are on max chest. Just double checking. And as you can see, there is 0.11% chance, which is slightly higher than that of uh, gem keys. If we go check gem keys, that's a 0.1%. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, VIP key at 1%. I somewhat feel like throwing those keys down, but I also feel like collecting them. <laughs> so I think I'm going to just keep going on collecting them, because this is how many times we've gotten that mythic task. We can keep track. Maybe we have plenty of other keys, we don't need to spend them yet. <coughs> well, so far, not the best of luck on these. I feel like our gem keys was getting better luck than uh, the guild keys at the moment. Yeah, it should be giving all-in drops. Because it stops... Uh, once you have all of the Guardians to uh, four copies in Mythic, they stop dropping any of the um, the Guardians. So once you have them all to four myth in Mythic, so all you'll get is 50 normal key drops. But uh, we're either getting really unlucky, or he seems to be almost worse than gem keys right about now. Doesn't seem like we're getting as many Legends. We still haven't gotten that Mythic yet. Until it proves me wrong by getting four simultaneously. Come on, Mythic. We know you're hiding in there. Don't make us waste all the things. I'm not even keeping track of how many resources I've burned through already. Not this time, anyways. Let's see, about 550 gem keys. 3,000 glory keys. And some amount of seals. I think we burned through 20,000? I want to say. I burned through a thousand each click. It ends up being 50 keys. Not so far so bad. We know it's in there though. Oh, that's a lot of legends. <laughs> it's trying to prove me wrong. Wow, that's actually really high. 
Oh, also, I don't. Ha I need more copies of Frostify there. That's actually really good that we got a copy there. Uh, I didn't bother using an orb on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because I knew we'd um, end up getting it up eventually. So apparently that's back in the drop table. That came out, um, yeah, that was about, about five weeks ago. Normally old event troops roll back around after like four to six weeks or so. Well, it looks like we might have to burn through our entire glory key stack. Gosh. One of our more unluckier ones, it looks like. Because these are pretty much the equivalent of opening 50 gem keys. In theory, they're even better than 50 gem keys ever so slightly. At least from a mythic uh, drop rate chance. Well, it's so far no mythic. <coughs> See how many we ultimately burn through. I'll have to double check after the fact. Because I've definitely lost track at this point. Let's see, we'll probably go to 110,000 and start going back into glory keys. Hey, Autumn Imp! Well, that answers that question, which imp is in the drop table right now. Um, Summer Imp finally left. Oh, you know what? They might have said it on the event thingy. Does it actually say? Because I know the Summer Imp said it was leaving. Uh, yeah, I did say that the Autumn Imp came in. Okay, cool. So, so many people are asking about that. Well, there's our answer. Um, they did actually switch the uh, Summer Imp out. And put the autumn imp in. They had the warning for it earlier. Um, but they did end up doing that before the keys. Because some people were concerned that they wouldn't do the switch before the keys. Uh, because people wanted to switch so that they could get the autumn imp. But uh, yeah, it looks like they did do the switch. So if you wanted to get autumn imp, it is available now. They're just the seasonal little imps um, for each one. Summer, of course, was prior. They run in two month cycle. There's six different ones. And of course, right now is the autumn one. They're mainly just for collection purposes. All six of them are useless, and they're not associated with any kingdom at the moment. So getting them isn't really that required, but hey, we got one. We already have them all maxed, though, as far as they can go. Okay. I guess we'll go down to 100,000. That is very far down, gosh. Today's the day we burn through every last key we have. It's been ages since I've had to use actual gems on uh, chess. Hmm. Maybe we do throw our four VIP keys. How would you want to make a bet? We throw down one, and it's like, here, here's the mythic. Also, since we only have four, we could throw them down one at a time. Because since they're the physical keys, we will not get penalized in cost. And the main reason I buy them in 50 bulks otherwise is because uh, we save gems that way. However, if we already have the physical keys, just doing them one at a time would uh, technically be the best way. Simply because there is no cost penalty for it. Seriously, though, what is this bad luck right now? This is extremely bad luck. Well, today's the day we burn through all of it now. Uh, we've, came pr we've come pretty close to burning through all of it before. And this might be the closest yet. We are getting ever so closer. Though we do have so many gems that um, if we really did, we could go and throw some of those at it. But I don't think I've needed to throw gems at um, at um, trying to get a mythic for a very, very long time now. <coughs> Can't even remember last time. It's definitely been several months. That is for sure. I keep forgetting, you can actually just click on the side to get through the window. Just do it that way. Ooh, double three legends twice in a row. Now show me the mythic. But you're going to get like two copies of the mythic simultaneously. Which uh, wouldn't be good. We wouldn't actually need more than one copy of this thing. So that would be funny. It takes all these resources and then it's like, oh, here, have two. Instead of having one earlier. But yeah, wow, this is bad luck. Well, if you guys want to see key openings, here you go. Here's all the keys and all the openings. Well, then. We're going to, like, full up our entire roster over again with how many keys we're needing to open right here. Hey, hey another autumn imp. This is absurdly bad luck, though.
Hey, another frost feather. Well, that thing's gonna be maxed by the time we get through this. Gosh, I think this is my third or fourth copy of it. I don't even remember. I'm not in any rush to get it maxed though. The main things you would use it for, don't, you don't even need it um, upgraded. Which is why I kept it down. Because most of the teams you would use it and you would just sacrifice it. Seriously though, wow. It's been a while since we had zero glory keys. So at this point we're almost gonna hit zero everything. <laughs> There we go. You took way too many resources to go get, gosh. Well, at least we didn't hit zero uh, uh, glory keys. But gosh, that thing was not worth it. Actually, yes it is. I need that one magic. Give me the magic. There we go. Power level 10 for Karakaroff. That is very, very important. Even though it cost that many resources, I think it was worth it. <laughs> Just because of how insanely good one magic is. Uh, oh, we can actually get to 11 or 12 star as well. Forgot about that since we could just get the thingy upgraded, but we need to go do that anyways. Let's just click on it and bring us right to this page. And let's go get them orbed and everything. Uh, simply just go and use uh, both the two orbs. Go throw a major orange on them. Boom. Get all of his traits. Throw a major green on him. Boom. Level 20. And that's him maxed out. And that should also be like a level 11 or 12 kingdom. Uh, apparently 11 is how far I can currently go. I'll take it. There we go. Two kingdom stars with the 10th one being the most important thing. And now that we finally have that, let's go and uh, do some teams. I guess not a real team. Uh, I'll do some teams. So let's start from the bottom, replace out the two that we need to go do. Uh, let's see, let's go get him in, Vosh. Get him in on top of Doomclaw. Same thing over here. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Uh, where'd he go? Right there. Get him over uh, Doomclaw. Okay, so let's get into these then. Uh, so, first off, we're going to be running a HP version of him with Def, and uh, this one doesn't specifically run Hero, but uh, should still end up being able to work out uh, pretty well. We don't specifically need Hero for any kind of half mana start or tanking or anything like that. We can simply just go use all the mana generation that we need right over here, and just get everything rolling with the uh, Leprechaun into our other uh, mana generator. Uh, okay, this might be a little bit too weak of a battle. Is this guy so weak on stats? But uh, what we'll be able to do here is uh, simply go and destroy that. Go get devoured. We'll end up getting a second death. <laughs> well, that's pretty convenient. That is exactly what I needed there. That would be like the most perfect summon, especially if you didn't own it. Uh, because you'd still get almost the full value out of it, even if you didn't own the death. That is pretty funny. He created a second death. Uh, that also gets to steal two life per turn. It has the same boost ratio. Oh, no, never mind. They actually buffed its boost ratio to two to one. He has even better boost ratio than uh, him then, technically. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. So we'll go and uh, just kill out our other second death. Sorry! And it will end up killing it out. And as you can see, he just keeps make making it another daemon into another daemon into another daemon. And the only time that would ever really change out is if um, it happens to have immunity to uh, devour, of course. In which case it wouldn't work then. Here we go. Here's a key team. Let's go see if it work against a, a real team here. Then we'll go show the uh, other one and go from there. But uh, same premise. Get the Leprechaun down. Got Frozen, but that shouldn't change things up too much. Uh, we have Cleanse, so not going to be too big a deal. Oh, or he'll just naturally do it himself. Uh, so let's go and get uh, another one going. Um, let's see. Do we sacrifice him now? I guess we go and sacrifice him now. Yeah, we'll go for the Sacrifice now. Get rid of that. See what we get for our summon. Nothing too useful. That's the Bounty guy, too. It is a Bounty Hunter weekend this week, after all. We'll be covering that on stream, of course. Uh, let's see. We'll get another Explosion there. We'll get his damage based on that. Let's devour that. Oh, hold up. Barrier. He... That's something they forgot to add. They might want to go fix that. Uh, for any of you that don't know, Black Beast has an invisible dispel on his ability so that he can devour things that have barrier on it. Apparently, they forgot to add the dispel to this troop. So that's an oopsie on their part. Because uh, Black Beast has it. Why doesn't he? He's the better troop. Yeah, he doesn't have it. I guess that was just a complete oversight on their part. But yes, Black Beast does have an invisible dispel. You can even tell because if you ever click on his ability, it shows dispel there, even though his card makes no mention of dispel. And that's mainly because um, it has an invisible dispel all attached to it. 
which is what he should have, but I guess they forgot about it. Also, this battle's been really annoying because for whatever da reason, split damage is considered AoE damage even when there's only one enemy left, which means we uh, aren't able to actually um, hit it. So we'd have to get a curse on it by taking a brown. Uh, so we can easily get rid of it. We just weren't really getting too many browns because this orientation of the team doesn't get as much brown. The other one I'll be showing does. But anyways, let me go show the Black Beast thing real quick, what I was referring to. I'm actually going to be showing the Black Beast team too, just in general. But as far as on Black Beast itself, because they are basically very, very similar troops. Uh, if we go, go click over here, you'll notice Dispel. Obviously, this ability has no mention at all of Dispel. It just says Devour an Ally, Heal back to full, and create six gems or skulls. Uh, but they get, ended up getting an invisible Dispel so that it could devour things with Barrier. But they completely forgot to add it to that Mythic, so that's a fail on their part. No, don't buy that. It's a waste. Um, but anyways, on to the next thing. Let's go to the Mountain Crusher version of this team. Uh, why must we keep getting useless three trophies? Whenever I want to farm, I never find these. Whenever I want to make a video, we find like a billion of them. Okay, this should this guy should be a little bit stronger though than the previous middle battle we took. But anyways, here's the next version that we're going to be doing. I'm going to be trying to mess around with it on stream too. Obviously, some other things you can do with it is uh, Mountain Crusher Apothecary with it. Um, right here, I'm going the Tesla method and just trying to go for a first turn and power like that in order to get everything rolling. And just hoping we get Mountain Crusher, which we did there, and uh, using Tesla for extra true damage to synergize with his true damage. Uh, generally, if you're using this, you're using him more so for his true damage than his skull. You're not really going to be using him much for skull. If you really wanted to do skull, you would just use Black Beast instead. You're primarily using him because of his true damage, more often than not. And right here, we end up getting uh, 50 additional damage. I do want to calculate something out real quick, though. He's going to do... Uh, let's slow down time a little bit. I do want to check this, because I don't believe anyone on the forum 100% confirmed it yet. And I do want to uh, double check it for right now. What am I looking for? I'm looking for... Uh, where's game speed? Uh, let me turn it down to slow motion. <laughs> and uh, go and uh, double check how much damage he does here. So this should theoretically do 88. If it does more than that, then, um, then it's actually gaining a boost from it. It should on average do about 22 to each. However, if it's actually boosting based on it, it will be doing quite a bit more. So let's see what it does here. Does it do about 22 to each? Okay. It does appear to boost based on the HP of the um, the thing you devour. So that's good to know. So whatever you end up devouring, it does appear to boost on that. So at least it does that correctly. It does calculate out the boost ratio for whatever you end up devouring into the calculation before it ends up doing the damage. So that's 66 HP if we were to go devour it again. We'll count towards his damage to give him a 22 additional damage. So that is a thing. So that's good. Because that's how we would want it to act. And then we just clear it out with Tesla. Basically just doing the combination between those two in order to kill out the battle. And if we need more mana, we just keep spamming out uh, Mountain Crusher for that. But anyways, for any of you that don't have this mythic, don't feel too bad. Because there is a much stronger version of him. And it is called Black Beast. <laughs> In most contexts, Black Beast is still going to be stronger than that thing. And there is one specific thing that has made this possible since about nine, or no, about a year ago now at this point. Uh, since about a year ago, of course, they added hero classes uh, all, with all the perk trees. And ever since they did that, on Archer and eventually on Thief a few months later, uh, we ended up having a really interesting combination that worked out very, very well for Black Beast that has actually made him a really decent option ever since um, Thief and uh, about a year ago when Archer, of course, ended up getting all these perks when they were added in the game. But um, yeah, we end up getting all these perks, and there are several of them that end up working out perfectly for uh, Black Beast to be able to function. One is Hunter's Mark, so that he can end up doing two times skull damage. The next is a bunch of summons. This has three summons. A 20% chance to summon something on whenever you get a kill. A 35% chance to summon something when it dies, and it used to be 50%, but it was nerfed. And uh, the most important one, which puts this entire team together, a 25% chance to summon a Hiranif whenever an ally casts a spell. And that, in particular, is really, really good, because we can just keep spamming two mana generators to constantly keep summoning. You could basically make mana, normal mana generators into summoners, so they could just do a HP heal or a cleanse or whatever else, and you can have it so they just keep giving you more and more summons, so you have Black Beast to have something to kill, which allows you to do it over your hero slot before you'd have to waste a whole nother slot on your mana generator to also have a summon, but now you don't have to do that anymore. You can just do it on your hero and uh, be done with it. 
and it ends up working out really well. One other interesting thing is Black Beast ability itself can trigger this 25%, meaning even if you don't have any other summon on your team other than Black Beast, there's still a 25% chance that Black Beast cast itself would summon something prior to him choosing a target. So uh, hopefully I could show that here too. But uh, the other reason that this class ends up working nice is uh, we have 7% free kill every single time we get a kill. Obviously that's pretty rare, but it helps speed things up. Um, ideally, you would use this with Thief Hero class, however, Archer has the same kind of premise. Uh, the only thing it's really lacking is the 7% um, the instant kill every kill. It also lacks that summon, but that one's not as important. Uh, mostly the 7% every kill thing is the biggest thing that's missing. Then, I guess technically the 7 damage the last slot that Thief has, uh, which ends up making it work out pretty well. Because you don't really need Archer's 15% instant kill in a context like this. But yeah, this is a really cheap team, Divinia being slightly less so. However, it is somewhat needed because of how the explosions work in this team and the fact that it has cleanse and everything. Because obviously, if we were up against, let's say, Entangle, well, we'd need something to deal with that, and Divinia ends up doing that. But uh, yeah, this is actually probably stronger than the Mythic. If you use this... Oh, oh, there's the Entangle. <laughs> Case in point of why you need uh, Divinia. This team is kind of Divinia required, um, but everything else on it is ridiculously cheap. Uh, well, I guess it's not technically required, but it definitely makes it better, that's for sure. But we'll do this. Uh, normally, we'd want to cast Stargazer first. However, due to uh, the current condition that it has, we are going to need to cleanse it. So we'll do that. So he no longer is entangled. We then go and... Well, of course, now he's webbed. That's not too big a deal, though. Uh, we'll take some greens here just to get out the way. Some yellow to fill that up. Uh, take away everything. It will go give him attack now. Uh, he needs to not die. Luckily, he does full heal. Unlike this new mythic, he does full heal every single time you uh, cast him and get a devour. So uh, even though he only has 14 HP right now, he will not have 14 HP for long, so we can simply just go do that. And we keep gaining more and more and more HP every single time, since he will fully heal back up and we keep getting Divinia, which keeps feeding uh, mana everywhere. So right here, you may notice, oh, what are we going to devour now? Obviously, we don't necessarily want to devour Divinia or our uh, hero. And if we were to do that on that, it would end up killing through that barrier. I'll go show that too because he has that dispel. But as you can see, we just got a Heron if summon because of the 25%. And then we just go and devour that and just keep repeating the cycle until we win. And that is pretty much this troop in a nutshell. Also, hopefully this does not miss or else we're actually going to lose uh, because of this thing right there. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this just to make sure we kill that. The triple damage is really annoying. But yeah, as you can see, we just keep doing this, keep cycling it. If we really wanted to, we can also get a Leaf Storm off of here and if we're running on a plus two yellow, plus one green, minus one blue right now. So um, that would end up helping with our green. That would also give it more armor, which you obviously can use for its ability. And it'll just keep gaining more and more HP. And as you saw right there, we end up triggering the 7% instant kill. We got another summon off the thing. And yeah, this is better than the Mythic. <laughs> Pretty much. If you're looking to use this mechanic, like the whole Devour mechanic more so than the true damage aspect, um, you're better off just using Black Beast or something along this line. Plus there's two hero classes that you can do with it. Archer and... Um, uh, Archer and uh, um, Thief, which is what we're using right now. You can also theoretically use any hero class that has Wind Tree, a tree that is often considered one of the almost worst trees in the game. However, it does have that Hero Nef thing, which uh, is normally horrible. However, in this context, is one of the only few good things it is really used for. So right here, um, it can get a little bit of a slow start. The whole premise, of course, when we start out any of these battles is we want to go and get our uh, Mountain Crusher and or Divinia up as quickly as possible, then go get the mana on there, then start devouring, and then kind of just go from there. Uh, of course, we can just keep full healing whenever we want. Can throw a Stargazer here if we really wanted to, just to give it a bit more uh, attack. Uh, I guess we will here, because why not? Uh, he's not going to die directly to that skull. Or then again, you know what? It's using Assassin. You are using Assassin, right? Well, how, why would that matter? Never mind. <laughs> that wouldn't make it matter. That would kill her, not him. Um, but yeah, we'll go actually just kill that for now. Kill her out. Didn't get any summon there, but we can easily just go through a Divinia, through a Mountain Crusher, keep doing it back and forth. We'll eventually get a summon, repeat the cycle, go from there. Uh, if I'll let me take my turn, grab that. Uh, ideally, we'd have Divinia here to get rid of all that stuff, but we don't at the moment. Just get a random free turn skull, get everything cleansed. Uh, looks like we are in a situation where we are going to have to just go and uh, Mountain here. Uh, oh, I do want to go show that we can devour uh, Barrier. You may have noticed earlier when we were using the previous Mythic that we were not able to um, devour through Barrier because they forgot to put the spell on it. Well, that's why you put the spell on it, because it lets you hit through Barrier. Not sure how they forgot that, but they did. Uh, okay, let's see if I can get the other thing to show. Um, it is possible to get 25% summon off of uh, his cast itself. I ideally want to show that. 
Let's see. I'm gonna get one more summon here just so we have something else to target. And then try getting off of him. It's very unlikely that we'd end up getting it here. Okay, there's something we target. Also, it doesn't matter that it's stealthy when you're doing it on your allies. So that's what I wanted to show. As you saw right there, we clicked Black Beast ability, and it ended up summoning a Hiranif before we got to choose our target. So even if you have no options, like if it was just our hero, uh, if we were in a really desperate situation, we can try using that 25% chance and hope we get a Hiranif and then devour that instead of our hero. If you're starting to get in a desperate situation where you have to do that, obviously this situation wasn't one of those, but uh, you can use that as a 25% chance last minute kind of thing in case uh, you don't have any other option in a given battle. But yeah, basically, final verdict. This most recent mythic is basically only good for getting plus one magic. As far as actually using it, it is not really going to be used for its devour mechanic. It's uh, maybe used occasionally in daemon teams, if daemons ever get half mana start, haha. <laughs> or some kind of better synergy into the future in general. Currently daemons uh, aren't really the greatest these days. Uh, back in the day, like uh, a couple years ago, like two years ago, three years ago, daemons pretty good. These days, not so much. Uh, they have uh, definitely seen better days, that is for sure. And given that he is a daemon focused kind of troop, it's not really going to be good for anything. Uh, obviously it could be ran in some true damage related teams. But uh, all you really use is like a really tanky kind of spell resistant uh, troop in that regard. And in that regard, that was one of the reasons why I said he might be potentially good for Guild War Day. Since you could end up using him as a magic tank for brown, green, or blue Guild War Days. However, I still wouldn't really advise on it. Uh, and he, there just isn't really much you would use him for. There's basically Guild Wars, maybe. And that's about it. He'd be slower, too slow for PvP. Um, he's too slow for true damage teams because there's better true damage out there because he can get quite a bit of damage But he takes a while to get going and you have to build the entire team around it and just overall pretty average troop or below average Probably if we were to put it on the tier list Probably around C or D tier probably C tier just because it does have a bit of versatility with it With what it can do and the fact that it would have usefulness into the future and as more demons come into the game It could potentially be better, but uh, final verdict is you basically get them just for the plus one magic. And that alone, I honestly say, is worth it. If you're within range of being able to get character off to uh, almost near 10 stars, like if you're at eight or nine stars or feel like you will be in the next few months, I'd probably consider trying to get this mythic just because plus one magic is very, very good. But anyways, guys, if you still have any other questions or anything you want me to go over, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope you all also get way, way better luck than I just did in trying to get that mythic. Goodbye, everyone.